a narrative of the captivity and removes of Mrs. Mary Rowlandson. This is a captivity narrative as well as a diary that covers Rowlandson's captivity by the Native Americans in the Massachusetts Bay Colony that took place between February 1675 and May 1676 during the Puritan era. Rowlandson was born in England and traveled to America with her family at a young age. She settled down with a family in the town of Lancaster, Massachusetts. And then the war started between the Indians and the colonists. Rowlandson and her family were taken from their home in an Indian raid of their village. They were taken as prisoner into the wilderness where they endured sickness, death, owning nothing but sorrow and affliction. She goes through the worst tragedy when her six-year-old daughter, overcome with illness, dies in her arms. Luckily, she receives a Bible from one of the Indians and is able to find hope again in her faith for God. She is comforted by the passages she reads. It helps her make sense of her situation as a trial and punishment. During the year in captivity, she makes clothes for the Native Americans in return for food. She thinks of the Indians as savages, but as time passes, she begins to adapt to the Indian way of life and notices that they actually aren't totally barbaric. She ends up meeting with King Philip, who helps to free her by getting the Indians to sell her to her husband. After her return to Puritan society, she writes her narrative. Rowlandson goes in depth to write about her experience in captivity and in the wilderness, but she also focuses on her faith in God and the savagery of the Indians in comparison to Puritan society. Some themes present in her narrative are captivity. Being a captivity narrative, we are given insight into not only how this person thinks and feels, but we are able to gather how others like them may think and feel during this time. We are also able to see the events in history through the eyes of the individual. Wilderness in the New World Ever presence of danger creates fear in the settlers. Intercultural contact We begin to see a merging of the two concepts of savagery and civility in the Indians and the Puritan captives. Centrality of God God and religion were a huge part of everyday Puritan life. We see the impact that God has on Rowlandson throughout her experience as being the one true force of all that happens. Rowlandson confides in her Bible to help her get through the experience. She reads passages and relates them to her situation to find advice and messages within. She believes that God has sent her into the wilderness with the Native Americans as a trial or test of her faith. Mary writes, I took the Bible, and in that melancholy time, it came into my mind to read first the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, which I did, and when I had read it, my dark heart wrought on this manner, that there was no mercy for me, that the blessings were gone, and the curses come in the room, and that I had lost my opportunity. But the Lord helped me still to go on, reading till I came to chapter 30, the seven first verses, where I found there was a mercy promised again. If we would return to him by repentance, and though we were scattered from one end of the earth to the other, yet the Lord would gather us together and turn all those curses upon our enemies. I do not desire to live to forget the scripture and what comfort it was to me. Mary finds comfort in the passages and believes that God has sent her scattered from one end of the earth to the other and will still save her and punish her enemies if she proves herself faithful in this time of hopelessness. This also shows the worldview that Puritans have that everything happens for a reason, and you either learn from it or hurt from it. During Rowlandson's time amongst the Indians, she began to adapt to their way of life. Rowlandson began to see the similarities between the Indians and the people of the Puritan community. She realized that savagery and civility are not so distinct that she may be becoming more savage and the Indians may be more civilized than they seem. Mary writes, I cannot but take notice how at another time I could not bear to be in the room where any dead person was, but now the case is changed. I must and could lie down 
by my dead babe side by side all the night after. Mary wasn't able to stand being near a dead person, and now she can lay beside it all night. Being in captivity has changed her. She is becoming more savage. Mary reflects on her change in her reaction to the food the Indians serve her. She writes, The first week of my being among them, I hardly ate anything. The second week, I found my stomach grow very faint for want of something, and yet it was very hard to get down their filthy trash. For the third week, though I could think now formally, my stomach would turn against this or that, and I could starve and die before I could eat such things, yet they were sweet and savory to my taste. Mary wasn't able to stand the smell and taste of the food on her first week in captivity, but now, now that she is starving, it actually tastes good to her. She is becoming more like the Indians. She is becoming more savage. Mary recalls when an Indian gave her shelter and food when she was at odds, a kind action by an Indian. She writes, At least an old Indian bade me to come in, and his squaw gave me some ground nuts. She gave me also something to lay under my head, and a good fire we had. And through the good providence of God, I had a comfortable lodging that night. Mary finds that there is civility within the savagery. She finds that there is kindness in the Indians. They're not all barbarous creatures. This realization leads Mary to believe that savagery and civility are more confusing than she thought. In review, we have seen into the Puritan mind through Rowlandson's experiences. We are able to see her thoughts, beliefs, and her perspective on people, concepts, and the world, such as God's role in the Puritan lives. We see that he is the cause behind every force of nature. We have also seen the savagery of the Native Americans and how their interactions with people from the opposite spectrum have turned out. Civilized Puritan society and the dangerous barbaric wilderness meet. As the two cultures mix, we are led to realize that we aren't that different from one another. In conclusion, Mary writes in the last page of her narrative, Before I knew what affliction meant, I was ready sometimes to wish for it. When I lived in prosperity, having the comforts of the world around me, my relations by me, my heart cheerful, and taking little care for anything, and yet seeing many whom I preferred before myself, under many trials and afflictions, in sickness, weakness, poverty, losses, crosses, and cares of the world, I should be sometimes jealous, least I should have my portion in this life. And that scripture would come to my mind. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Hebrews 12, 6. But now I see the Lord has his name to scourge and chasten me. The portion of some is to have their afflictions by drops, now one drop and then another, but the dregs of the cup, the wine of astonishment, like a sweeping rain that leaveth no food, did the Lord prepare to be my portion. Affliction I wanted, and affliction I had. Full measure, I thought, pressed down and running over. Yet I see, when God calls a person to anything, and through never so many difficulties, yet he is fully able to carry them through and make them see, and say they have been gainers thereby. And I hope I can say in some measure, as David did, It is good for me that I have been afflicted. The Lord hath showed me the vanity of these outward things. Mary states that she is glad that she has had this affliction. For now it's gone, and because it was a big affliction, doesn't look like there will be anything worse.